One year ago, Bill Belichick did something that he almost never does, and that's going on a gigantic shopping spree in the middle of free agency. And one of the main things you could tell that he was looking for was brand new tight ends, and brand new wide receivers. And he was able to find those tight ends in the form of Hunter Henry and Jonu Smith. And he was able to find those wide receivers in the form of Kendrick Bourne and Nelson Aguilar. And going into the season, it's not that Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Bourne were bad. It's just, in my opinion, they aren't true number one wide receivers. So the Patriots are still in the hunt for that. Well, it seems like today we have a rare case of a division rival helping another division rival in the form of a trade, which in my opinion is a little sketchy. So before we get to the content, we're giving away $500 to a subscriber that turns on their notifications on this channel. We're giving away another $500 to a subscriber that turns on their notifications for Flight Mike TV, my brand new general commentary channel. Now that we got all that out of the way, break! Mike check one, two, one, two. What's going on everybody? Guys, it has been an absolutely insane off season. And I feel like I open up all my videos by saying that, but in the latest turn of events, we have a real trade that is going down between the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots, which I'm personally fairly skeptical of. You see the Miami Dolphins have been wheeling and dealing this entire off season so far. I mean, whether it's smaller ones like signing Connor Williams away from the Dallas Cowboys in addition to Cedric Wilson, signing Raheem Mostert away from the San Francisco 49ers to gigantic swings like trading for Tyreek Hill and giving up multiple high draft picks in order to do so and signing the top free agent in the entire free agency class in Terran Armstead. Needless to say, this team is in phenomenal shape. I don't think people understand how set the Miami Dolphins are. They're in a situation where they're able to make all of these decisions if they wanted to. And yesterday, the Miami Dolphins also once again agreed to a five-year $90 million extension with Xavier and Howard. I know this is like the third year in a row where Xavier and Howard has agreed to an extension with the Miami Dolphins, but this time he gets $50 million guaranteed which is the most money that any cornerback has made in NFL history, especially in the form of guaranteed money. No, this is not an April Fool's prank, ladies and gentlemen, because it gets even better. This morning when we all woke up, we got some breaking news that two division rivals in the AFC East are making a trade with one another. After the acquisition of Tyreek Hill, and of course you already have Cedric Wilson and Jalen Waddle on the Miami Dolphins, there was one man that seemed to be the odd man out and that's Devontae Parker. Now, Devontae Parker is a very peculiar case because this man is actually a remarkable player when he's on the field, but that's the problem. How often is he truly on the field? The last time Devontae Parker has played a full season with the Miami Dolphins was 2019. In that season, he had 1,202 yards receiving and nine touchdowns and a pro football focus grade of a 79.2. And therein lies the problem. After that, he had a year where he only played 14 games that season, but he was still fairly serviceable, 793 receiving yards. And then last year, he played in only 10 games and was able to come down with 515 receiving yards. On top of that, typically when a brand new head coach comes in, he does like making significant changes to the roster if he is able to do so. And it looks like the Miami Dolphins are doing that here. Because according to Ian Rappaport, the Miami Dolphins are trading wide receiver Devontae Parker to the New England Patriots in exchange for late round pick compensation. Parker lands at a perfect place with stability that he's been wanting while Miami gains financial flexibility. We do have the draft picks for you guys. Now, of course, that was just the first tweet in regards to this whole thing. The actual draft pick compensation, according to Ian Rappaport, is the New England Patriots are sending a 2023 third round pick to Miami for wide receiver Devontae Parker and a 2023 fifth round pick. So pretty much the New England Patriots are downgrading their third round pick to a fifth round pick and getting Devontae Parker in return. Now, let's break this bad boy down. 
because there's a part of me that's a little skeptical about this trade. Historically, the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots have made trades like this, which is pretty interesting if you think about it, because it's very rare for teams to make trades with one another in the same exact division. You just don't see it very often because typically you want your competitors in your division to fail. It's the main reason why Deshaun Watson wasn't traded to the Colts. It's the main reason why typically you'll see teams trading their star players to a completely different conference altogether. But something about the AFC East is different. I can only think of a few instances where players were traded within the same division, one being Donovan McNabb at the tail end of his career when he got traded to, from the Philadelphia Eagles to the Washington Redskins and he sucked afterwards. And then Drew Bledsoe after the New England Patriots decided to move forward with Tom Brady over Drew Bledsoe. He got traded to the Buffalo Bills. He was solid for his first year. He sucked for the other two years he was there. And then before he knew it, he was no longer a Buffalo Bill anymore. So you just don't take typically see this happening, but it's really funny because Mike Reese actually mentions how the Miami Dolphins and New England Patriots have had a trade history. I mean, Wes Welker was a former wide receiver for the Miami Dolphins and he was traded to the New England Patriots. And then you have some other instances of draft picks being traded with one another. So I feel like that's just an interesting note to make. But for the most part, let's just break this down for what it is because Devontae Parker was the odd man out in Miami with the addition of Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddle, Cedric Wilson. It just didn't make sense to keep him around. He's still a pretty damn good wide receiver whenever he is available, but that's the problem. Is he going to be available? I think. The the New England Patriots are giving up just the right amount of capital in order to acquire such a player. But in my opinion, I don't think Devontae Parker is a number one wide receiver, mainly because you can't really count on him making it to the field. If he can, then who knows? You could potentially get wide receiver one type of production out of him. But again, this is just a man that's only played in one full season for the entirety of his career. Obviously in 2016, he's had an instance where he played 15 games. His rookie season, he played 14 games. But if you're really banking on him recreating that magic from that one breakout season, uh, I feel like that's a little reckless. Luckily for the New England Patriots, they're giving up draft capital in next year's NFL Draft. This year's NFL Draft is known for two things, depth in the edge rushing department and depth for wide receivers. If the New England Patriots go wide receiver with their draft pick and they knock it out of the park, then I think they're going to be set up really well for next season. Needless to say, I feel like this risk was definitely worth it for the New England Patriots. Yes, I am a little skeptical about the fact that the Patriots are trading within the division to acquire a wide receiver but they've done this with the Miami Dolphins before and the last wide receiver they traded for ended up being a pretty damn good player in Wes Welker. For the Miami Dolphins, this is a no-brainer type of move. I mean, the fact that they were able to go into this offseason, completely overhaul their entire offense and add players like Tyree Hill and Taron Armstead while still having two first round picks, a second round pick, and two third round picks next year is a gigantic win in my book. Now, this also means a completely different thing. Originally, we thought the New England Patriots were in on Odell Beckham Jr. They were in very deep conversations with Odell Beckham Jr. yesterday. I'm assuming that this means that they are, they are out of the Odell Beckham Jr. race. Unless something else is going to happen, I'm really unsure. OBJ apparently doesn't want to make a decision anytime soon and he really wants to think about it. So it will be really interesting to monitor this situation. Overall, I think this is a win for both teams. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think about this trade. Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike. I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.